Several groups led by Native American activists protested in South Dakota Friday evening as U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania visited the state for an Independence Day celebration at Mount Rushmore. More than 100 protesters, many Lakota, lined the road leading from Keystone to the monument, holding signs and playing music in the heat. One of them was Cabrilla. This is our land, and we do not support that. We do not support racism. We do not support rapists. We want them out of, we want them out of our land, and we want our land back. The event, being held in the midst of a coronavirus outbreak in the United States, is expected to draw thousands of people. Though masks are being offered, they are not required, and social distancing is not being enforced. Leaders of Native American tribes in the region have raised concerns the event could lead to virus outbreaks amongst their members, who they say are particularly vulnerable to COVID-19 because of an underfunded health care system and chronic health conditions. The World Health Organization should soon get results from clinical trials it is conducting of drugs that might be effective in treating COVID-19 patients. Mike Ryan, the head of the WHO's emergencies program, said it would not be wise to predict when a vaccine could be ready against COVID-19. Vaccines may have shown efficacy by the end of the year. The question will be uh, whether or not the scale up and production of those vaccines uh, will be enough for us to begin vaccinating people uh, early in 2021. Ryan added that countries need to take the pandemic seriously and rely on scientific data instead of emotion or political goals. A Turkish court has opened the trial in absentia of two former aides of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and 18 other Saudi nationals over the 2018 killing of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. AP's Charles de Ledesma reports. Turkish prosecutors are seeking life prison terms for the defendants who have all left Turkey. Saudi Arabia has rejected Turkish demands for the suspects' extradition and put some of them on trial in the kingdom. The proceedings have been widely criticised as a whitewash, with Jamal Khashoggi's family later announcing they've forgiven his killers. The trial in Turkey will be closely watched for possible new information including the whereabouts of the late columnist's remains. I'm Charles de la Desma. An NGO says the mysterious deaths of hundreds of elephants could have a devastating impact on the species. Reuters' Emer McCarthy reports. The dead elephants were first spotted months ago, with poaching ruled out as the cause of death as the carcasses were found still intact. Since the late 1990s, Botswana has seen its elephant numbers steadily increase, but a report prepared for the government by a separate conservation organisation said aerial surveys showed that elephants of all ages appeared to be dying. Founder and director of Elephants for Africa, Dr Kate Evans, says the deaths have come at a difficult time, with charities and conservation efforts hit hard by limited resources and funding cuts. That's Reuters' Emer McCarthy. French President Emmanuel Macron has named Jean Castex a top civil servant and local mayor who orchestrated France's coronavirus lockdown exit strategy as his new prime minister. Reuters' Soria Ali reports. He hails from the centre-right of French politics and served for two years as the second highest ranking official in the Elysee Palace during the Nicolas Sarkozy presidency. An Elysee official described Castex as a senior civil servant whose experience in local politics would help Macron connect with provincial France. The announcement followed the resignation of Edouard Philippe, a figure some political analysts say was more popular than the president himself. But after his party's dire showing in nationwide municipal elections on June 28th, Macron wanted an overhaul. He's reshaping his government as France grapples with its deepest economic depression since World War II, a sharp downturn that will shrink the economy by about 11% in 2020 and reverse hard-fought gains on unemployment. That's Reuters' Soria Ali. Wall Street took Friday off in observance of the U.S. Independence Day holiday.